Welcome back to Absolutely Marvel in DC. My name is Benny. That is Sal, and my shirt's got Destiny leftovers. It's my Destiny clan. We're the leftovers. No one wanted us. <laughs> yeah, we made it. A, we made it a thing, though. Nice. Is that get custom? It? Yeah, we actually got this custom. <laughs> That's cool. That's yeah. actually really cool. All right, guys. Anyway, today Sal and I are going to be talking about Peacemaker one through three. I'm not going to do my usual recap that I do for these individual episodes because it's three full episodes that were all about an hour long. I the yeah. first thing I want to state about this Sal about Peacemaker one through three. Yeah, I started that and like blitzed it to the ending. I enjoyed it so much. Yeah, it I, I, took me yeah. four days to watch the last ten minutes of that last Boba Fett episode <laughs> <laughs> when I wasn't on the podcast to discuss it, and mm-hmm. I put it on pause and we did other work. I didn't come back yeah. for four days. <laughs> well, I mean, the internet is with you. Right? I mean, <laughs> I hear you. With Pacemaker, though, yeah, I watched the first two episodes immediately, and then uh, I, I wanted—I actually wanted to hang on to the third one, so I waited a day, and then I watched the third one. And, uh, you know, I could have watched My wife and I did do that. We watched it the first two. Easy. Yeah. We watched the first two, and then the next night, that was our night show we were going to watch. Just sit down. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yep. I am surprised how good this is, considering this is a no-name superhero with a no-name superhero cast. Like, this is like Suicide Squad's here. Peacemaker's here. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. No, I mean, I, I'm not surprised in the least that this is so successful because, like, at this point, James Gunn is a proven commodity. Dude knows how to tell story. He knows how to make you feel bad for characters who are objective scumbags. He's got that like niche covered, and he knows how to tell that story. And 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 uh, you know, everyone in this show is a is a is a bastard, and yet I'm still enthralled, and I'm I care about all of them, and I'm interested to see more. Uh, I don't know if he's necessary. The, the the thing is, it's so easy to do because like Judo Master's in the show, and it's just not Judo Master. Like no. it's just not. It's it's actually. I, it's, it's not. Looks, well, it's kind of vigilante, but it's not vigilante either. It's, it's not even close. No, vigilante is like a disgraced lawyer who hates the system. <laughs> like vigilante <laughs> has a different motivation, and this is just Deadpool for DC, which it I is. am all about, especially because he's more sympathetic. Because yeah. like Deadpool's unkillable. Like I like Deadpool, but like vigilante is like dude can get his nuts tasered off, and <laughs> I okay, actually that, feel that was one of my him. favorite scenes because yeah. Peacemaker, let's go back to Peacemaker. He's peacemaker. self-centered, but he's, but at the same time cares about others because he just wants peace however he gets it. He's more or less the villain of the Suicide Squad movie, and then they yeah. turned the show into his <laughs> show. And uh, and I get it. Like, there's he's a scene. John Cena, man. There's a character. There's, there's an actor I wrote off years ago. I was like, ah, here we go. Thanks, The Rock, for kicking yeah. in the door for all these friggin' wrestlers to show up and be like, I'm Mr. Mom. But, like... John Cena, outside of Bumblebee, I still think he's he he thinks he's in a different movie than Bumblebee. But like <laughs> e- every other thing I've seen him in, I'm like, gotta give it to him. Gotta yeah, give it to him. He's I like a him. great actor. But I loved I loved how it kicked off because it literally just picks up right where the post credit scene leaves you. Yes. But, and I just love how he gets up, but he has that whole opening debate, and that just set the whole tone for the show for me. And, that opening debate with the janitor about yes. whether or not the janitor thinks he can just leave. Right. <laughs> and, and every show has at least two of those janitor type conversations. Like, there's at yeah. least two kind of like, where are we going with this? Everyone's kind of bizarre conversations per episode, which is my kind of thing. Like, if, if I've been, if, if they doppled me into the future from high school, I would be all about this because I was very oriented for like dialogue. Like I was a big Kevin Smith movie fan. This is just like a Kevin Smith movie with a real budget. Yeah. And uh yeah, that's exactly but like classic Kevin Smith. As it, opposed well, to like I, mean, I found I found religion in weed, Kevin Smith. I mean mention we have a whole scene where he sits down with his dad, which I thought was just gonna be like the oh, here's how sad Peacemaker is. Yeah, like no. here, <laughs> and it was, but he sits down to eat with his dad, only to then tear into blood sport. And the two of them just start cracking up, and I'm like, yeah. where is this story going? Oh, the story's going nowhere. And I'm right. loving it. I'm yeah. loving the, you know what I mean? Like, just yeah. to see that, I don't want to say it here, because obviously mm-hmm. what his dad ends up saying, it's not because of the spoiler, but I'm pretty sure we'll get demonetized. Yeah. But for it to go, like, this whole thing, I'm like, oh, they're just having a chat. They're having a great laugh. And then his dad throws that line out there, and I'm like, whoa. Yeah. No, his dad, whoa. I mean, it's perfectly cast, by the way. T-1000 oh, yeah. is amazing. Uh, I loved him in uh, in X Files as well for like yep. the half second he was there. But yeah, no, uh, brilliantly cast. Everyone's fun. Everyone's terrific. Uh, canonized Batmite. I loved Finally. that the comment about Batmite. I Bat-mite. loved the I love Vigilante just happening to follow them. 
Yeah. Like they're the worst spies ever and vigilantes <laughs> just hanging out in a bush. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. No, the, the deep cuts are great. Uh, the characters are believable despite their being in a fantastical setting. Uh, and the story, such that it is, I mean, like, the story is, like, about the butterflies, right? That's, like, the superhero story. It's, like, Okay, I didn't Google, I normally Google to see if these characters, and most of these characters are from actual DC Comics. Yes, I believe. Are the I, butterflies I a plot? I think the butterflies are a thing. Uh, it's certainly an, exp- it's certainly a term that is used by people like Waller in the DCU. Um, I just, I don't recall the plot, because I'm not a big Suicide Squad fan. Like, I'm sure there might be an Ostrander plot somewhere where the, the butterflies are reference but uh i do recall there being like when they talked about butterflies i'm like i know exactly what you're talking about and then like there's actually like an allusion to it like there's a shot of a caterpillar on a branch and i'm like ah that's smart uh but then uh and then tiffany was like hey uh is mr mind gonna be in this show and i'm yeah, like oh my god up, i mr. hope mind. so <laughs> it could be this here's a prediction really quick what's that what's the event oh, which one the event where I don't want to spoil the DC event, but Mr. Mind is at the core of it. I don't remember which one it is. You know what I'm talking about though, don't. where like no. it turns out that Mr. Mind is I think it's Infinite Crisis. Is it? Or at least it's oh, a precursor to Infinite maybe. Crisis where Mr. But, Mind mean, was in charge. Like I think that's going to be the big thing at the end, but you know. What I'm really digging about the show though is not just the butterflies. One I am happy that we are getting to see the meta. Yes. When the when the girl that he slept with turned out to be a meta yeah, I was like, oh, because at first I thought we were just going to get a lot of you know vigilante and peacemaker doing street level stuff, good, fun. Yeah, but we're we're still getting into the DC universe. We're still remembering that the menace are there. Um, I just love how much this show is all. It's it's yes, the butterflies are there, but I feel like the butterflies are backdrop. Yeah, to the character development James Gunn is giving Peacemaker completely. Yeah, I even like the when when he couldn't take the shot on the family. Because oh of the God. kid, because of the kid. Like, that was such a pivotal... And they, they held on it, they held on it. And then even Vigilante, hey, buddy, just just take a side. I got... Yeah, you know, let me let me got, take this. And then he's singing, like... Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... No, it was great. Uh, the, the scene that got me in terms of, like, acting was when he's... When he finally has a minute to himself. Oh, yeah. And he just completely decompresses and cries about, like, Rick Flagg and how nobody likes him. And now it's like, oh, this dude is... Like, he can't help himself, but he is aware of himself. And it's like, yeah. that just, it, it just made him more real and I, I, I just, and, and more sympathetic. I was like, oh, like that. Like, he is aware, but he's just so dead set on peace. By that's who any he is. Means. Yeah. He just can't. Like, he just can't get out of his own head. And it's like, that's really cool, uh, which is something I shouldn't have been surprised by. Like, but it was, it was a real moment. Oh, well, like, even hey. in the current comics, the rewriting of Peacemaker, he's still just an evil bastard. Like, he yeah. doesn't have any real character development in the current Suicide Squad run. Exactly. What do you think? I don't know her name, but the woman who was in Orange is the New Black, the larger black woman who's like... Yes, I don't remember she her seems, name. She seems weird on the show. Like, she's the only out-of-place one. We got Harcourt. We got yep. uh, the guy in charge of the group. They're the mm-hmm. black ops. We got Peacemaker, Vigilante. Yeah. And then for some reason, she's stuck with the group. I don't know if she's right. supposed to be like the audience is like you're Dan- the audience's eyes on everything. Yeah, that's uh, Danielle Brooks. Danielle Brooks okay, plays Danielle Brooks. Leota and Leota is as established in one of the episodes. This is a whole spoiler cast, by the way. If you're, if you're here for not spoilers. I said at the beginning we weren't going to recap it. We're just going to yeah, go but in. But she's so. she's Amanda Waller's daughter. Oh, yeah, there's a that shot I in didn't. there where she's talking to Amanda Waller, and she's like, all right, Mom, and she hangs up. Oh, okay, I must have missed that. Uh, I but think... it's funny, because I actually read real close attention to this show. This show hooked me in, like, immediately. Exactly. <laughs> no, she she's Amanda Waller's daughter. She's the plant. She Because these are the same... Some of these characters are the ones who hit her in the head with a golf club in the Suicide oh, Squad. Yeah. And they and mentioned she's like, that they're being punished. <laughs> right, but, like, I would assume Waller's punishment is murdering them, but it turns out instead it's just, like, going on this really crappy assignment, and I'm like... So her daughter's on this team because she's the only one she fully trusts and she's like a plant. I'm assuming that like <clears throat> twists and turns, like the thing is any anything can happen in this show because the DCEU may never exist. And as a result, like the James Gunn has carte blanche to kill or do whatever he wants. And so as a result, like 
like like Leota could could become Amanda Waller in this show. Like she could be like I'm in charge now. Like she could be that a could secret be. badass. I, I don't know, but like she's there's some her her hand hasn't been played yet. She I, I mean she just seems so skittish. What do you think yes. about Eagly? I know that was one of your hangups in the trailer. I mean he's the fun. CG I'm glad Eagle. he's not. I'm glad he's not overdone. Uh, but the CG is totally fine. No complaints. Yeah. Uh, it Eagle works fine. for him. Yeah. No, I love it. What about the reveal of his father and who he really is? I think it's White Dragon. Yeah. 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 Uh, that was messed Which up. I Googled. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I googled, and if you don't know, White Dragon is like the leader of the Ku Klux Klan in right. D.C. Apparently, they have a, the KKK, and they have a leader yep. <laughs> in D.C. I right. didn't know that. I no, will that, admit that. I like when people, I was like, I get it. Like I was like, yeah, no, I believe that. I just love <laughs> when people give me crap because they're like, how do you not know this? Did you know they have a, Ku Klux, a KKK? Like I can't even say their name properly without right? stumbling over the words. I like, assume that there was a KKK. I just don't want to know any more about it but i love that they <laughs> used it in some way like that's really yeah. cool um yeah no he's he's a scumbag and he, now he's totally unsympathetic and like i don't feel bad for him uh i didn't feel like there was much going when they revealed that he had made the helmets i was like okay he's probably an old villain on the reveal right. that you know but when he went to the prison and everyone was bowing down to him i'm like yeah. okay now there's definitely something going on here like right when he's no, talking was, about the sun and where it reaches, he's like, I'm like, oh, he's been here a few times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was really cool. No, uh, I mean, like, not cool in terms of, like, I don't like this character and I don't condone anything that he believes Well, I, th says. I think that's one thing James Gunn did a great job of. From the get-go, you do not like this character. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's okay. But, like, you don't, you're not supposed to like anybody, and yet you do... Uh, I don't think there's going to be much sympathy for Robert Patrick's character, though. <laughs> no, no, but that's not fine. At all. That's fine. Make him a villain, and I'm like, you know, it's cool. Like, uh, yeah, the, the, he's really setting things up. Okay, so the other one I want to talk about is I loved the torture scene mm -hmm. because I loved Vigilante arguing during it with the tasers and a lot of those stuff. I loved the jokes of like, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, but for me, when they were cutting off his pinky toe, yes. and he couldn't get through it because it was rusty. Yeah. Yeah, I was he's just like, why is like, this coming off? He's like, because it's because you're using crappy you're old tools. Rusty, yeah, you're crappy tools. <laughs> yeah, that was great. I was just kind of like, what is even happening? Because for me, so I popped the show on. I started making lunch, and I paused it because I'm like, okay, I want to pay attention. The, the opening conversation between him and the janitor. Yes. Then I watched the show, no problem, for the first two episodes, and I was really enjoying it. But that last scene, that, that torture scene for me was like, I don't even know what to expect anymore. Yeah. Because now John Cena's character can't take the shot, and then Vigilante's toe is getting cut off, and mm -hmm. what is happening here? Like, yeah. No, I, I can't predict like where the show is going to go, and I'm really I'm, I'm glad of it because I yeah I'm just enjoying the show. I'm enjoying the ride. Because, I mean, like when it came down to the Kate Bishop show, we basically called it for the most part <laughs> as it was going. I mean, and like, I'm not expecting nuance and surprises from the Hawkeye show, but I, I was happy with it. We liked it. The, no, oh, yeah, no, no, we no definitely liked it. it. But it's like, it's, it's, yeah, we know it's, it's setting things up. It's paying things off. It's establishing what's happening next. Like, because post credit scenes are irrelevant in the MCU now. So instead, they're they're making whole shows that are post credit scenes. <laughs> and uh, so now it's like, uh, you know, I, all, all right. I mean, I'm not in any way. I was no. At no point was I like, "Whoa!" In an Hawkeye show. In this show, I'm I'm genuinely like, I don't know what's going to happen. But that's the thing is that like the like you know the difference here is that like James Gunn gets to do whatever he wants, regardless of previously established canon or anything like that. Like he's yeah. just carte blanche with the characters. Whereas with the Marvel shows, it's like he, he, the character has to do something consistent like they have to be consistent like people get lauded praises at the hawkeye show for being like wow what a great kate bishop like what a ca what a screen comic accurate kate bishop right. whereas like this is not the comic book peacemaker that's not judo master like I, you know no <laughs> judo one master was hilarious uh, judo master is ridiculous <laughs> I, I was so yeah i liked everything about it i thought i was gonna hate it but i'm very thrilled that i, I, I was wrong how about the bearded guy clonking him in the head multiple times because Judah Master won't stop crawling away? I was exp that was great sight gang. I was I was genuinely I was like I think Die Beard's gonna die here, and then I'm like oh okay no he just he just beats him to death. I'm like okay that's fun. <laughs> yeah no it, it's it's great. I'm I'm just I'm I'm enjoying it. Every episode like breezes by. I, at one point in the third episode three, I paused it to like get lunch, and I was like halfway through, and I'm like thank God, like there's so much more left. Yeah, like, that, yeah. that's a good feeling. I know. I apologize to our viewers. We don't normally. We're not normally this all over the place with these reviews. But I mean, it's they gave you three it, episodes. What do you? You know, it's three episodes. We're trying to run through them, and I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed every minute of it. I'm excited for Thursday or Wednesday, whenever it comes out. Yeah. Contrary to that, Boba Fett. I don't even care. 
Like, <laughs> I, I think I think for a lot of people, like that was the last episode of Boba Fett they're ever gonna see. <laughs> Which, like, I, that's not that's not me. Like, I'm gonna watch the rest of Boba. You know what's Fett? hilarious? The big thing for me was just the decision with the biker gangs, and I, I mean, we'll talk about this on a Boba Fett thing. <laughs> yeah. But if those bikes were in Peacemaker and you just see John Cena riding one, I'd be on board. Oh, yeah. But you put them in Boba Fett and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> no, no. There's a there's a couple of tweaks that you could have done that would have made people not hate that. And, uh, <laughs> you know, this is apples and oranges, though. They're completely they're two different shows. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. So... But, all right, well, this has been absolutely Marvel in DC. Uh, across the board, rambling, enjoyable episode. Rambling for us, enjoyable episodes. Check them out. We are absolutely Marvel in DC. Every day we get together and talk about something going on in the world of comic book movies and TV shows, rumors, theories, reviews. It's all here. Subscribe, hit that like button, and join us.